Hey everybody, this is Alex Kowalkowski with Prime Media Consulting and the Total BS Show. For some reason we got muted. Hi everybody, it's Alex with uh, Prime Media Consulting and the Total BS Show. I'm here with Ina Vernikoff, who is an attorney in New York City. Uh, and I'm so excited this week to have her on. Uh, we've become good friends over the course of the past couple years in regards to just sharing business ideas and what's working and we've worked on a couple projects together. But uh, I wanted to bring her on because we normally have a lot of contractors on this show. Uh, and this show is all about small business owners, uh, the pitfalls, the struggles that they've gone through in starting their business, what are the steps that they've learned along the way to kind of become successful. And I wanted to really highlight some professional organizations, a more, more of a white collar idea because we do have a lot of white collar clientele or people that watch this show that uh, want to get help as well. So I asked Ina to come on because she's one of the most strongest woman, women that I have ever met and uh, she has her opinions, she has what she knows what works, and I think there's nobody else that could be a better uh, person to kind of share what's going on in New York City uh, than, than Ina. So Ina, welcome to the show. Thank you, Alex. Thank you so much for having me on, and uh, thanks for that glorious introduction. I appreciate it. Ah, uh, you deserve it. So for people who don't know who you are, which is very few, rare, at least in the New York City area. Everyone seems to know Ina. Uh, tell me uh, a little bit about your background, who you are, how you got started, and how did the business really get started? Sure. Um, so I am an immigrant. I came to this country when I was 12 years old from the Ukraine, from the former Soviet Union. Um, and, you know, I went to college. I um, eventually went to law school down in Florida. Um, took the bar here in New York, and um, I worked for a uh, immigration practice for a little bit under a year before I started my own practice. So I could say that I started my practice with very little actual experience, um, and I started it back in well, almost six years. It's going to be six years in October that I have my own practice. Um, so yeah. That's basically um, how we took off and we're still going strong. And uh, yeah. So what made you actually wanna get into the legal profession though? Oh, I think I, I wanted to be a lawyer for probably since I was very, very young. And I think what drove me to this profession is I always wanted to fight injustice. Every time I saw something that I thought was unfair, I always wanted to do something about it. And uh, so the, this profession always attracted me from a very young age. So what type of law do you concentrate in? So I've been focusing on matrimonial law, family law, and immigration. Um, when I started my practice, it was more of a general practice just because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I had some immigration law experience, but I didn't know what it was, you know, what I actually wanted to do um, later on. And what happened was, divorces actually found me so and the way that happened was I did a lot of work free work for the community and for friends before and people just knew who I was and they knew that I was a lawyer and they knew that I was passionate about my work and what I do and uh, they just reached out hey can you do my divorce and um, you know I, I learned it on my own uh, nobody really taught me um, and so that's how I started doing that and then I ended up getting clients and I ended up advertising for that area of law. So why did you jump from working for a, a company, another a group, a law firm, to then owning your own small business? What was the catalyst to kind of say, I want to kind of go out my own and venture off and, and do this thing myself? Yeah, I mean, the plan was always to work for myself. I never really planned to work for someone. Um, the reason why I was working for a firm um, was that I uh, wanted to gain some experience and I was also in between, I was waiting for my bar results. So right after law school, I worked for the farm, I was getting experience and just waiting, um, you know, to get admitted to the bar. And uh, once I felt that I had enough experience, I opened my own practice. So you opened up your own practice and uh, do, are you the type of person that just dives right into something or, or were you more of a calculated decision of, I want to kind of, uh, s dip my toes in before I go, or do you just, are you the type of person that just dives right in and goes for it? So I'm a little bit of both, 
but I am the type of person who takes big risks. So um, this this was a risk, but um, I I really I started with nothing. I had only three thousand dollars when I started my practice, and I honestly looking back. I really didn't know much, you know, but what I knew when I was starting my practice was that I, I really cared about people and I really care about people and I wanted to help and um, I care about my clients. And I know that that is actually more valuable than any experience that you have because you can learn um, and I'm a fast learner. You can learn things as you go. And as long as you care about what you're doing and you care about your clients, um, it's going to work out. And you know what? It did. So when it comes to starting your business with $3,000 in the bank account, like what is the hardest thing that you had to experience in, in kind of getting those gears moving? And then what are some of the things that you see other either attorneys or professional companies or just, or just business owners in general struggling with as well? Are they the same or are they a little bit different? So, um, so with $3,000, I really didn't know how to budget it, right? And I didn't know how to prioritize. Okay, so $3,000, what do you spend it on? An office, on a website, on marketing, right? And when I started, I, I had, I would say, half of a client because the client that I got was a one-time, it was a one-time court appearance. And it was my first time having to appear in court. So, um I didn't know. So what I did was with that money, I rented a virtual office, which was, I don't recall now how much it was, but I think it was something along the lines of a hundred dollars at first. Um, Cause I didn't need to have a conference room. I didn't, I didn't have any clients. Right. So I just needed an address. So I got that. And then I wanted to get um, someone who would put my name out there a little more. So I hired um, an SEO company, I think it was $500, um, just to get my name out there a little bit. And you know what, just with that, I opened a bank account. Um, and I paid for a phone line, which was, I don't recall exactly how much it was. But I think I ended up spending less than $3,000 just to open up. Okay. Um, I, oh, and I think I hired someone to build a website for me just to have a website. Um, but with all that, I, I just, you know, I just did it. I just jumped into it and, and clients came, you, you know, you know, that phrase, um, build them and they will come. That's basically how, how it happens. Right. I just did it. I was just sitting there. I was working out, you know, uh, managing, you know, building up Excel spreadsheets, figuring out a system that I would have, um, filing, just figuring things out. And you know what? It just, people started calling me. People would call my cell phone, they would call my business line, and it just it just ended up taking off. And then eventually I ended up renting a space from WeWork so that I had um it was a very small office and you know you can you can get a conference room. I think it's point based, so you can get a conference room for a couple of hours a month. Um and it just, you know, it it took time. And I used to I remember my first year, I used to sit in my office till two o'clock in the morning, one, two o'clock in the morning every night just you know working and learning the law and learning how to do divorces and whatever whatever it was that i was working on so yeah um and i'm sorry what was the other question so what do you think is the hardest part of owning a business i mean uh what was the biggest struggle that you had so i think what's a little tough is the stress, the level of the stress, right? Because basically you're the owner and you're responsible for everything. So you have to wear a lot of hats when you own a business, right? And I feel like um, you have to oversee kind of every aspect of it. So you got marketing, you got accounting. If you have, um, you know, an employee or employees, right? You have to oversee them and make sure they're doing their job. Um, and then you also, you know, part of this, Part of, part of uh, owning a law practice is that you're you're a business owner and you're a lawyer. So you have two big jobs, right? You have to know how to run a business, right? So you have to make sure, you know, the bookkeeping and all of that is intact. Obviously, you have professionals eventually when you have 
you know, enough money to hire professionals who can, who you can delegate to, you have that, but then you also have to oversee them. And on the other hand, you're also an attorney. So you have to know the law, you have to um, represent your clients properly um, in court, and you have to draft documents, you have to, you know, be presentable. It, it's just you wear a lot of hats when when you um, when you run a business such as a law practice. So I think that part is what's a little bit challenging. What's interesting is that uh, when I met you, you know, it's it's funny hearing that you you started your business in th- with three thousand dollars, and then I, I flew into New York with my wife, and and, and we connected uh, for for an afternoon, and and going down to where your office is. If, if I say, if I butcher it, I apologize, but you're right by Battery Park, right? And yes. you're, I mean, that view of your of where your location is, is a long ways from, and that's success after success after success after success of you growing your practice from a, an immigrant to college graduate to $3,000 in the bank account to now having one of the best views of Battery Park in New York. And for those people that don't know what Battery Park, if I, again, I'm butchering, that's where the Statue of Liberty is. And, and so, you know, what's cool about seeing your progression as a business owner is that you're, you're the type of person I just know from, from what you post on Facebook and what you, what, how, you, how you manage your business, diving right in and going for it seems to pay off for you pretty well. And, 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 do, and someone that says, and I think most businesses, the reason why they struggle is they don't just go for it. And they they're too they they dip their toes in too much and they wait for somebody else to be the example so then they can do it versus just saying screw it I'm going to be the person that's going to be changed that's going to cause the change I'm going to be the first ripple and I'm and usually that first person that makes the ripple is going to be the one that is the success and then everyone uses that as a mold and so one of the things I would equate to your success is you're you're fearless I mean you you're somebody that will go out and and kill it not only for your customers but you promote yourself that way too as someone who is going to win. And, and people like to be around a winner. But I have to ask you this question. How do you get through the bad days, the struggles? Because everyone, every business owner loves to talk about their great successes. But how do you get through the days that are, that are, that are struggling? So, I mean, and obviously all of us have those days, right? Um, I, just, I just think about the next day. So when I have those bad days, I just think, look, this has happened to you so many times before. And you've always come out okay. So just know, you just tell yourself, you just know that this day is going to be over and tomorrow is a new day and it's going to get better. I just, you know, because at first when you experience those bad days, when, you, when you're in the beginning of something, practice or anything else, right, any venture, you, you know, it's scary, it's stressful. Oh my God, what is, what's going to happen to my business? Oh my God, am I going to have to go bankrupt? And it's like, um, no, you've, you've been through this before. You, you've done this so many times, you've overcome a lot of challenges, you can do it again, and tomorrow's a new day. That's what you gotta tell yourself. Okay, so in your opinion, what truly makes a successful entrepreneur? I think, look, there's a lot of qualifications, there's a lot of things you can say about what makes someone successful, um, but in my opinion, the number one thing um, is, passion and caring about what you're doing and about the people you're serving. That's, that's, that's what I think is the most important because I think if you have that, everything else will come with it. Okay. So, um, one of the things that I've seen is that when you, when you, when you get through a bad day, you know, you have to overcome sort of some sort of adversity usually with that. Can you tell me any type of uh, hurdle or, 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 or obstacle that you had to overcome? So, um, in the, if you think about the most recent uh, times, right, we had COVID. I mean, we still have it. It's still here. So, um, I think that was a very difficult period of time for everyone. Um, but, but it is very difficult for business owners, right? Um, I mean, if you walk into my building right now, it is virtually empty. Um, right now, and we were talking before and I was telling you, I'm on the 27th floor in my building. Right now, myself and my assistant are the only ones here on the entire floor. So 
this is, I think, a very challenging time for all business owners, for everyone. And what was, um, I think what was pretty bad is that people were, this fear was instilled in us. Um, and I think it was done by the media, and I don't mean to get political in here, but I think that um, obviously there's a crisis and obviously there's a situation, and unfortunately we lost so many people. Um, but I personally, and I know my, a lot of my friends know this, I was really scared, and I was sitting at home. Um, I mean, obviously everyone had to stay home at some point, but, you know, staying at home and just being scared, petrified of this, of this thing and not coming out. Um, and, you know, just knowing that you can't, you can't come to work, you can't come to your office. Um, you don't know what's going to happen, right? The uncertainty, um, you know, it, it became, the business became pretty slow. Uh, and it's been like this for quite some time for a couple of months. Um, people were afraid and still are afraid to spend money right because the economy is we're in a fiscal crisis right now um and it's it's very scary right and um i think it was in may i think it was in may um i started coming back to the office obviously i took precautions necessary precautions um you know mask and sanitizer and all that and i'm very careful but i felt that i needed to be here um and i started coming back and you know what when i started coming back here um, that's when the clients started coming back, even if I had to do Zoom and um, and I'm still doing Zoom and, well, and um, you know, Skype and, on, you know, phone calls for consultations. Um, so it was a it, it was a very scary time and I had a lot of fear and I learned that this, you know, fear is probably one of the worst things that could happen to you and that, you know, um, you really need to overcome because if you don't, it takes over your life. It takes over your business. You know, you can't focus, you can't concentrate, you can't work properly. You can't serve your clients properly. And honestly, I, I'm here in my office. I do see clients with a mask on and with social distancing, but I'm doing it and I feel so much better. And I feel like this is something, you know, big to overcome for a lot of businesses right now. And I think that people should not. Sorry, I got a phone call. I hope are we good. We're still here. Um, I think that people should not be scared. People should be careful and, uh, you know, take all the precautions. But having fear is going to prevent a lot of good things from happening. Well, I mean, one of the things that. I, I equate when, whenever there's struggle or something to overcome, you rely on your community. Your, your, the whole adage of it takes a village, right? And it, it, whether you're a kid, raising a kid or growing a business, it takes a village to make success. And I know that community is something that you're really passionate about. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you give back in some way to, to the local New York community? Oh, sure. Um, so I'm involved in a bunch of different organizations. Um, I'm very passionate about anti-Semitism, fighting anti-Semitism. Um, you know, I have uh, grandparents who were Holocaust survivors and, uh, you know, members of my family were killed in the Holocaust, uh, you know, and uh, I'm very passionate about this cause. So I've been, I'm actually the Women's Committee Chair for an organization called Americans, Americans Against Anti-Semitism. It's an organization founded, founded by a former assemblyman, Dov Heiken. Um, and so, so he's founded that and he runs that organization and I'm involved in that as well. But I also run the uh, Women's Committee, uh, which was formed actually right before COVID. Um, and so what we do is, I mean, we, we were supposed to do a lot more things, but because of COVID, we couldn't. Uh, so, for example, our first event was supposed to be uh, bread, uh, breaking bread with the African American community, just because we want to, you know, build ties and unite with them and talk about our common goals and what we do have in common and just, you know, uh, make friends. Uh, we couldn't do that because of COVID. So then we we just have. Um, educational webinars and we speak out against anti-Semitism on social media where we see it um, and we just do whatever it takes to combat anti-Semitism. So that's uh, one of the things I'm involved in. And the other thing that I do 
um, is I am a chairperson in an organization called Legion Self Defense. Um, so I don't know if you know, but um, about the Pittsburgh shooting in the um, synagogue in Pittsburgh, it was a pretty big um, anti-Semitic attack. Um, a bunch of people died in that in that shooting, and um, after that, I just I, I started seeing and feeling like we're not safe in the city um, as Jews, but also just as you know, as as just people um, who live in in New York City. And um, I I started uh, I joined a self defense organization called Legion. Um, it's basically teaching people to defend themselves. So I do what's called Krav Maga. It's Israeli martial arts. Um, it's basically self defense training. And um, I eventually became involved in the, in the organization a little more, and I'm a, I chair the Sunday sessions. So that's something I do on a voluntary basis. I don't get paid for it, just like I don't get paid for uh, being the women's committee chair for Americans Against Anti-Semitism. So those are a couple of things that I do, and then um, I'm just active in the community. Um, I write for numerous publications when I feel outraged and when I feel like I need to speak out. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. That kind of summarizes it. So the other thing I remember is when I remember when you were first getting into it, uh, you literally broke your foot. You were so invested in and in, in going to classes and I was like oh one day I just she's walking around in crutches now because she's been you were you were going there you were promoting this thing about how to how to rally everyone together to 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 protect themselves and and so I, I thought it was cool not that you broke your foot that was cool but I thought it was cool that you, um, you when you're passionate about something it really it really shines through and so what's what's cool is is to see kind of not only your growth in regards to your business but the way that the community seems to connect with you and, 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 and your passion in regards to making sure everyone is safe and cared for is, is fantastic. And I think that kind of shines into your business as well because if they see you active in the community, growing and supporting them, they want to support you back because it does take a village and you rely on that business, uh, that village, not only to when they need help, but when you need help, it seems like they always come back to you. Um, and so the next, the next question I would ask you is how you're not the only immigration or divorce attorney in the New York area, in the Tri-City area, right? I'm sure there's a couple of other attorneys out there. How do you differentiate yourself between you and, and another guy that might be down the road, down, down the block, down the building, down the hallway from you? Oh, there's a sea of lawyers. I mean, this city is saturated with lawyers, right? Um, look, it goes back to what I said before. If you care about your clients, you end up doing a good job. And the other thing is they see that, you know, um, I think I would say I have probably a 95. I mean, I, I didn't, you know, it's not like statistics. I didn't calculate this in any way, but I would say I have about a 95% retention rate. So when a client comes through my door, um, most of the time they will hire me. Right. And I think that's because when I sit with them and I talk to them during the consultation, they just I'm just me. Right. I'm just I just do what I do. Right. I ask them questions. I, I uh, you know, find out what the problem is and I recommend I advise. Right. So um, they they feel that. Right. They feel um, your passion. They feel that you're someone who cares about them and they feel that you're the one who can solve their problems, right? So I think if you come through that way, it, it already automatically puts you on a different, you know, on a different level than any other lawyers because you can't even imagine how many clients complain about attorneys who don't care about them. They just take their money and they don't care about them. They don't care about their case. They don't follow up with them. They, they fail at their jobs. You just don't care. It's just not important. And it's when I started this, uh, when I started my practice and when I got into this, I couldn't believe the kinds of things that people would tell me uh, about other attorneys. I couldn't believe that these are lawyers. These are people who went into this profession to help others and they just neglect people. They lie to people. They take their money and they don't do anything. They fail at their cases. I, and, um, and I think that, you know, caring and being passionate about what you do 
really will 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 differentiate you from everyone else. So, what do you think are the like top characteristics? If if you're gonna if you if you are going to coach somebody of starting a business, what are some of the characteristics that you would say you need to make sure you check off when you are going to actually go out on your own and launch something because you're going to risk a lot. Being a business owner is one of the biggest risks you can make in life because you're, you, you can always get another job, but you, you're putting your neck out there when you own a business that you're going to feed your family on this one thing, your eggs are in this basket. So if, if you were going to tell someone that is starting a legal profession and wanting to go off on their own or whether they're a plumber in Poughkeepsie, who, who knows? What are the characteristics that you think would really make a good business owner or a leader? Okay, so a couple of things. So number one, um, I would say you have to be a risk taker. You can't be scared. You have to put that aside. You have to jump into it and just do it and not be afraid to make mistakes. Um, you know, in the beginning when I just started this, I would freak out if I thought I did something wrong. Um, you know, everyone's going to make mistakes. Don't worry about it. Um, you make a mistake, you learn on it, and you have to learn how to move on. Okay, so that's one. Um, the other thing that I would say is you have to be very organized. If you are messy, you cannot run a business. Um, you have to know exactly where everything is. You have to know what's going on in your books. You have to know what's going on with your money. You have to know what's going on with your marketing, what's going on with you know, the work that your assistant is doing, if you have an assistant, um, you have to know how to delegate, okay? You have to be very organized. If if your stuff is all over the place and your papers are all over the place, you're going to mess up, you're going to mess up your cases or whatever it is that you're, whatever type of business you're running, you're going to mess it up if you're not organized. Um, the other thing is you have to be responsible and you have to be on time. I think people really love when you're on time. And you know what? Lawyers have big issues with timing. Um, I myself have, uh, you know, I've been working on my time management. Um, but that's a big one. You know, um, when you meet with clients, when you, I actually, one time, a long time ago, when I just started, I um, got stuck on the train and I had a client uh, waiting for me in the conference room for a while and they ended up leaving. Um, and that's a big lesson to learn, right? You, you have to try to be on time. You can't make excuses. And yeah, it's something to work on. So I think if you have those, and there's so much more to discuss, but I think these are some good starters. So if you could go back and talk to the little girl that was in the Ukraine, and uh, you can give her some, some advice to your younger self, what would be the, the, the thing that you would tell your younger self? I would tell my younger self, just do it. Don't be scared, just do it. I think that's interesting because I, ask, I, I literally ask that question to every single person every week and that's pretty much the same answer is that so many people will say that, that, that become successful like, like Ina has is that they just say, just do it. And so many small business owners they, they, like we said earlier, they just dip their toes in, they wait for something to happen to them. And you have to be the one that drops the rock in and goes for it. Um, because if you don't, you're always going to be waiting for the right time to drop the rock. And that time will never come because someone's going to take that spotlight. Um, someone, someone at some point thought of um, the Oreo cookie before the Oreo cookie was the Oreo cookie. It could have been the Kevin cookie. I don't know what it could have been. But I'm just saying, like these these ideas come up, and you have to act on them. So the the I know we're running out of time, so I want to be respectful of you. You're incredibly busy. I know you got a lot of stuff going on. Um, but if you if you could do this for me, can you tell me real quick um, what do you do to treat yourself when you know and you have a dartboard or you have your goal sheet and you look at here's what I want to hit and you actually accomplish it? What do you do to make to celebrate your success? I absolutely go shopping. You and my wife would be very dangerous together. Yeah. Uh, so, so when it comes to, to that's your, all women. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I know it's amazing. Um, I I don't shop at all. <laughs> um, so, what are the what are the rest of the goals? The final question I have for you, because I know, like I said, you have you have very limited time. I know you have another appointment you have to get to. 
Um, what is the last quarter of 2020 looking like for for Ina? What are what are the goals that you have on the dartboard to say? I want to make sure that my business accomplishes this coming up year. Yeah, I mean, uh, as I said before, COVID has really impacted businesses, right? So right now, really just looking to pick up, you know, uh, pick up business, bring in more clients, um, you know, uh, figuring out what's going on with the courts because the courts are still closed. Um, but yeah, just really picking up as much as we can. Um, I don't have a number goal right now, which I really should, um, but just because everything got a little messed up with uh, the whole COVID situation. Um, but, you know, just looking to really grow and, and increase uh, business as much as we can. And I know that you're really great at, at helping with that. Uh, we worked on a couple of projects before with Prime Media, and I know that you do a great job. So um, you do the SEO and uh, the other marketing stuff, uh, which is really great. So, yeah. It's been, it's been really, really great working with you on those. Um, so that could be something that's very helpful to other businesses if anyone wants to, you know, um, consult with you on that. So, so I wanted to, to leave you with this. Thank you so much for, for being on. I know it's, it, it, you're a very busy person, so trying to get any of your time is, is very appreciated. If, you, if you're looking to, uh, if you're in the New York area or in the, in the Miami area, because you also have an office in Miami, um, one of the best ways to reach her is vmlawnyc.com or you can reach her at 212-729-3497 uh, and, and get on her calendar. She is, if you're in need of an immigration attorney or a divorce attorney or some sort of legal issue, whether she can handle it or she needs to refer you to a trusted partner, um, she is the, the go-to source to ask for help. Uh, so I, I appreciate your time. Uh, I know I know you're busy, and uh, we will talk to you guys next week as we dive into even more BS, uh, which is business spotlight for those people. And um, and we'll we'll talk to you guys later. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alex.